Hi, this is 13.4. We're going to do some more things with vectors. Previous one, we did dot product, which ended up with a scalar. When we do the cross product, we're going to end up with a vector. So a little background information. This is really very introductory. But with matrices, and a lot of you have not had matrices, but we can find what we call the determinant. So if we have a matrix, which is a 2 by 2, so this is the dimensions of a 2 by 2, we can find the determinant, and that's what we need to do this operation by taking the product of those two and then subtracting off the product of those two. So we get AD minus CB, and I made that disappear now, so that looks better. So if I want to find the determinant of these two, why don't you go ahead and find those two? So that equals 13. So I go here, 10, and then I minus negative 3, that product, so I'm going to get 13. So that's the determinant of that. For part B, you can do the determinant exactly the same way, except for you got a few more times to do this. So if I go like this, I get a product which would be a 2. Now here, if I do this one, I don't have the third item. Well, the third item is right here, so you can loop around, or else you can just rewrite that first row again, and then rewrite the second row again. And then that will help you put this thing together. So I'm going to end up with that 2 from the first one, and then I'm going to go do this, this next one, which would be 3 times negative 1 times 0, which is just 0. That works out pretty good. Then I'm going to do this one. That also has a 0. 0 times negative 1 times negative 2, which also would be 0. Then I'm going to subtract. Don't forget to subtract, so i got to go up on the other side. So with the 3 by 3, then I'm going to end up with the first one here is going to be 0 times 2 times 0, which is not another 0. And then if I do this one here, this is going to be negative 2 times negative 1 times 1, which just gives me a 2. And then this one here would be 1, negative 1, and 3, which looks like negative 3 to me. So I'm going to be putting that product together. I'm sorry, that sum together. So it's 2 minus a negative 1, which would be a 3. So a determinant of a 3 by 3 is kind of the same operations. You do the yellows going down, and you do the blues going up, and then subtract off those blues. Okay, so the cross product. With the cross product now, this is going to find a vector that is perpendicular to two other vectors. This only works in three space because you can't find a vector perpendicular to others in two space. And so what we have to do is look at, and it, this is really hard for me to draw, but if I have these two in a certain plane, then a lot of times what's going to happen is we're going to end up with a vector that is going to be perpendicular to both that's going to be kind of straight up off of them. Now this doesn't have to be straight down, straight up, and all that kind of stuff, but it's going to be two in a plane, and then the third one's going to be coming up perpendicular to both of those. So we have a couple things here. This is the right-hand rule, and so with the cross product, if I have two vectors, they are not commutative, so what happens is that if I take W and I take and cross it with V, this does not equal V cross W. They'll be equal and opposite. So what we're going to be doing then is talking about, okay, this is the resultant cross product, that vector. Is it going to be shooting up or is it going to be shooting down? And that depends if you are doing W by V or V times W. I'll talk about it a little bit more in a little bit. But there's two definitions now for a cross product for us. One is the geometric definition. Geometric definition, just it's the area parallelogram, so that the edges are V and W. So if I take V and W, which I've just labeled here, and I want to find the cross product, really what we're doing is we're just finding the area of this parallelogram that we have right here. So if I go like this, and I go right like this, that parallelogram area will be the cross product. Now that cross product is also going to give us this length of that normal. 
So let's not confuse this, though. The cross product will be this red vector that I do have here. But the cross product magnitude will give me this yellow, or else it will give me the area of this parallelogram. They're the same things. Okay? So that's really what it is for the geometric definition. We do need the angle in between those two vectors, and then that will help us with the sine of theta. The algebraic definition deals with now this determinant that we just talked about for matrices. And so with this, we want to find, well, with our vectors, we're just going to set this up and we're going to multiply it out. Notice that for the I coefficients, we're actually going to take the things that are not associated with I and multiply them together. With the j's, we're going to take the things that are not associated with j and multiply them together, but we have to get that order appropriate. Which one's positive, which one's negative, and that's done with the matrix. Okay, so if we do the determinant, this is kind of a mess right now, but once you get good at this, it should be pretty easy. With this determinant, that will set up this exact equation right here. So if I go with my coefficients of i, we're going to take my B2 and multiply by W3. Well, there it is right there. Then we're going to subtract off V3, W2. Well, with this blue that I got going around here, so this is W2, V3, gets me that with the I. So we write I, J, K up top, and then we can go ahead and do the process for the determinant. It will give us all these values. This might seem a little confusing to you right now, but don't worry about it. We'll get it, and it will go pretty quick. So now here's some good uh, pictures with what's going on here. So this is that vector I was talking about. So the magnitude of that vector is the same thing as the area of this parallelogram that we have right here. This angle in here is our theta, and so we can figure out the different things with the cross product from that. And then here is another picture, V cross with W. Now, when they say the right-hand rule, what they're talking about is that, and I can't draw this, sorry, but these are your fingers. And then if you curl around, then this is your palm of your hand. So this is your finger, this is your palm. Which way does your thumb go on your right hand? It would go up. And so wherever your fingers are, that's going to be the first value here, or the first vector, and then the second vector is where your palm is. So that's the best way to figure it out, I guess. If it was W dot or cross with V, then what's going to happen is that with your right hand, this side would be the fingers. So your fingers always go on that. But to do that, you got to turn your hand down. And then your palm is going to be here. When you turn your hand down, then your thumb is going to point down. So then this cross product would give us a vector going down here. Here's my three by three determinant that we talked about, and then that just makes it a lot easier to figure it out. So example one, find the cross product of three i minus j plus two k and negative four i plus two k. Use this, and then go ahead and use the dot product that the result is perpendicular to both u and v. So let's try this now on how we're doing this. So we're gonna try first of all by doing these ones that go down, so this would be negative 2, let me get a different color, negative 2i, and then if I go this next one down, that's going to be 2 times, and notice that I curl around here and catch that 4, so it's going to be 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8j, and then I've got this k here, and that's going to catch 2 more, there's always going to be a product of 3 things, so that's going to be my 0 times the k, so I'm going to get this. Now we gotta go ahead and subtract all the ones that are going up. So I got this one here, which is my negative four times negative one times k, which would just be four k. I'll just put this at the end, sorry. And then the next one would be zero times my i. So I'm gonna do this one here. So that would be zero i. And then my last one, would be this 2 with my j, which would be 2 times 3 times j, which would be 6j. 
Now, if you don't like all these whipping around and stuff like that, remember you can write, rewrite the first two columns of this right here, right here, and then you can just go down to the right, down to the right, down to the right, and so on. So now if we simplify this, this is going to be equal to, once I account for this negative, then I should get negative 2i minus 14j minus 4k, if I did that right. Now what does that mean for us? Well, that means that we're going to have a vector that it has a cross product of this value right here. Now, what if I ask you about the area of the parallelogram formed by these two? Remember, that's the magnitude of this vector that's, that's perpendicular to the two others. Oh, wait, I've got to go back. Use the dot product to verify this result. So if I take the red from my resulting cross product and I put in the purple, I put in my u. Once I put that in there for the dot product, what, look at what happens. Negative 16 plus 14 minus 8, which does equal 0. That does mean that I am perpendicular to my u vector. You can do a similar type thing with v to verify that you're going to get 0 for that as well. So that's what we end up with. So we're going to get perpendicular vector to both those other vectors. Now back down to this one. Find the area of the parallelogram formed by this. Well, that's just going to be the magnitude of the cross of u and v. So that's going to be the square root of 4 plus 196 minus 16. Oh, plus 16. And I believe that's 200, square root of 216 should be the area of that parallelogram. What if they ask you instead a triangle formed by the three vertices? One would be the origin, and then the other two would be the points that are make up the endpoints of the two vectors u and v. Well, then that would just be area is equal to one half base times height. This is equal to base times height. So then, if I add the triangle, that's just going to be one half square root of two sixteen. So sometimes they'll ask you about the parallelogram, sometimes about the triangle. Okay, we got a few properties here. And what the properties tell us is that they're just th things that deal with the cross products. So we said that V cross W is not equal to W cross V, however, that they are equal to the opposite of each other because one's pointing up, the other one's pointing down. And if we do a scalar, we got similar scalar rules to what we did before. And then also if we have some sort of cross product distributed property, that would be also true. Now if we look at uh, one last example, one last example here is a new way to write the equation of a plane given three points in the plane. If you remember we did this earlier in the chapter 12, but now it's going to be using vectors. So let's find the displacement before, well, we want to write the equation of the plane that contains these points. So we want to find the displacement between two sets of those vectors. So I did PQ, now I'll do RQ, so then it's going to be 4 minus negative 2, which would be 6. I'm going backwards here, sorry. 6 minus negative 1 is 7, and then 3, uh, I'm sorry, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So those are the displacement vectors that we do have. Then we want to find a normal vector to the plane. So if this is my PQ and my PR in the plane, then the normal is going to be perpendicular. I wanted to make that red, sorry. It's going to be perpendicular to both of those. So I'm going to use the cross product. So I'm going to take my PQ and I'm going to cross it with my QR. So I took my PQ and my QR, put it in the determinant form, and then went ahead and found out what the cross product was. So when I cross it, I get this right here. So that is this vector right here, right? And so with that, now I can write the equation of my plane that contains this P, Q, and R thing, though. That's what I want. And so with that, I just use the previous rule that we talked about. So here's my normal, and then I can take either one of these and use them to create the equation of my line. So I'm going to take my 4 and multiply it, and then I'm going to take my 10 
and multiply it, and then my 11, multiply it, and that's equal to 0 because I'm doing the product of two perpendicular vectors, and they're going to be equal to 0. And then I plug in my x minus x naught. So I'm going to use this one here. So this would be 2. This would be y minus negative 3, so y plus 3, and then z plus 2. So then there's my equation of my line. Plane, plane, not line. So in some respects, we work around the plane to get the perpendicular to the plane, and then that makes it easy to write this equation to sort it out. So this is some sort of normal to the plane. And then a couple last things here. We have the area of the par parallelogram with edges. Uh, and so it's edges V and W. And so that area is just the magnitude of the cross product. And then they tell you what the cross product is. And then there is the parallel pipette with edges A, B, C is given by this formula right here. So it's cross product. You do the B times, I'm sorry, B cross C, and then you're going to dot it with the A. And it's going to give you a value, which is a scalar. Or you could do the absolute value of the determinant figured out by this. I'm going to let you try that and work that one out. All right, thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day.